right. I think we found our campsite for the night. Welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku. And Jocelyn and I are doing some more van camping, van winter camping, winter camping in California. If you're in California, the best time to camp is now in the winter because the summertime is way too crowded. You can't find any campsites. But winter time, you can find plenty available and it's still like 60 degrees. I'm kind of getting hot right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to, oh, 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 look what I got. We got brand new wheels on the van. The tires and wheels. Look at that. Beefed them up to all terrain tires. They look great. This is going to allow us to get inside more sketchy terrain. This is a two-wheel drive only. It's a real, it's a rear-wheel drive, so um, we don't have like that off-roading capability. But with these beefed-up tires, and if we put a winch in the front and a hitch in the back, I think we should be pretty good. So we should be set to do some uh, some nice uh, backcountry stuff. So look forward to that. But tonight we're just gonna make some Korean barbecue. We just got here. It's the evening. Sun's about to set. Uh, yeah, make a fire, make some dinner. Let's get it cooking. We actually went looking for Matsutake the other day. Let me show you that clip really quick. Well, we're just gonna go and check if we can find some Matsutake at our Matsutake spot. We've been checking every other week for the past month or, or two months maybe. But we haven't found any, so... Huh? You're going too fast. So I'm going too fast. But no, it's, they're not here. They're a little bit more... A little bit further in. Yeah, so we found the Matsutake here probably two years ago, three years ago maybe. And we are looking at the same area around the same time of year because they do come back yearly. No. Oh, hey, hey, hey look at this. I found one. Found a suspicious bulge underneath. Look at this. Yes, yes. It looks like a marshmallow that's been toasted. Looks like a marshmallow, huh? It's been that's perfectly toasted. A little toasty marshmallow. You ready? Should I dig it out? Yeah. I didn't even bring my mushroom knife. Forgot. Yep, that's a matsutake, all right. 100%. Look at this. That's a perfect one. Just about. Still got the veil. Mostly covered. Still pretty young. Really firm. Oh! That was nice. My goodness, here you go. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, I love that. Love, love that. Well, I guess we're going to do some quick exploring. Let's check out this area. Now, Jocelyn's calling me over here. You know, for what? You never know. These are uh, eucalyptus trees, mostly cypress. Uh, not, not much. I don't know if we're going to find much here. Let's see. For this video, we're gonna keep it pretty casual. Just a little day in the life, you know what I mean? Before we do a little fishing tomorrow. Uh, and that'll be a separate video. But this one, we'll just keep it a casual vlog. Cause we haven't done one of those in a while. Oh, beautiful day. Beautiful day out here. Oh, it looks kinda high from here now. Oh, oh, oh. Get it. 
Oh, getting old. <laughs> getting old. We're gonna go make some Korean barbecue. We stopped at H Mart on the way up, and uh, we're gonna do some do some of that. It's always a good camp meal. Bunch of meat. Bunch of saucy meat. <laughs> and matsutake. And our matsutake. And one single. Yeah, we'll find more. <laughs> I think my fa it doesn't register my face. So your face is too strong. Like, all right, you think I can get up there? Um, a little tall. A little tall, but. Yeah. <laughs> Tree hugger. I'll just stick to this. Ah. I'm gonna give it a go. <laughs> pathetic. That Zelda. was pathetic. I can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get like two inches higher and get my hands up, I could probably do a pull up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep dreaming. Getting my groove back. We should start trying to set fires without lighters. I know. That's why um, I just try to light a stick and light it just to challenge myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's going so far. But I have thought about, I do want to get like a flint. I mean, if you use a flint, that's still kind of like, you know, I mean, it's not cheating, but you know. If you can start it with just a stick. That'd be hard. I think I tried to do that as a kid. I don't think I had success. Yeah, like a friction Oops. fire. That'd be crazy. Our friend Kevin from Catch and Cook California would be able to show us some cool ways to start fires. We're actually meeting up with them next week. So you'll see him back on the channel soon. And Come on, we're timing you. Let me rebuild it. We're timing you. Yep, 4.52 right now. <laughs> you better hurry. You <laughs> Wait, gotta I get to. it started before 5. I will tell you, it is really awkward to build a fire on, on these things because it's an angle and these sticks tend to be pretty long. But uh, let's see, she's building the fire on the sticks, on the larger sticks, and putting the kindling on top of that. What do you guys think about that, right? Her approach to building this fire. Alright, let's see. I think that's going to catch. Oh, here we go. She's going in with a bigger stick. It's getting away from you. Uh oh, you're, it is, you're, it is getting away. you're not over the flame. Oh no, oh, too nice. much pressure. <laughs> well, she moved the fire location. It started there. Now it's over <laughs> here. You either gotta give it fuel or give it air. It's got plenty of air. Fuels and sticks. Oh, it looks like we're getting some fire. Let's see what how much time you got left here. Oh man, it's 4.58. When Jocelyn builds fires, I usually just stay away. Because as soon as I touch it, she says I put it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good there. That's going to catch. Right at 5. Right at 5 p.m. Good job. You did it. <laughs> and that's another reason... If you're in California, it's better to camp in the winter because you can have fires. In the summertime, it's too dry. It's lit. Ta -da. Yeah, I found one that was sticky, so I figured it had the sap. Oh, you had some sap on yeah. it? Mm. Yeah, usually Cheat sap code. helps. <laughs> it's how you start fires, sap. That's how we did it in Alaska. Mm -hmm. We found that like weird wool and then uh, Matt found the sap in the tree and brought mm -hmm. it over. Mm -hmm. Big log going on. Yeah. All right, we got the grill set, the fire going, and we have one of my favorite things when I go to Korean barbecue, short rib, and also another favorite, beef tongue. Yes, those two go to. We got some veggies too. Got some eggplants, quartered the matsutake, got some pickled daikon, we got some perilla leaves, and some okra as well. And Jocelyn's homemade kimchi with the homegrown Napa cabbage. 
That's going to be good. And also homegrown daikon in here too. And got some sea salt and sesame oil, of course. Great combination for any Korean barbecue night. We also have Good Day. <laughs> this is called Good Day. This is soju. My rice should be should be done now. Looks good. Before we start cooking, one more ingredient that I have is this right here. What the heck? <laughs> well, this is tight. Oh, there we go. This right here is sturgeon caviar. Stilo, uh, who you've seen in my recent video, he um, gifted me this caviar. Check it out. I'll show you that clip right now before we start cooking. What's up, dude? What you got for me? Some, uh, some black gold here. Oh my here. god. Sturgeon caviar. Sturgeon caviar? Are you kidding me? What are you going to do with this? I don't know. We'll try to process it. Make it edible. Yeah, make it edible. No, it's good. That's crazy, like dude. <laughs> That's crazy. Dang, this is... That's I don't know. How much do you think it is? A couple pounds? Yeah. Yeah. Nice and it's ready to go. Damn, this is crazy. We'll see how it turns out. I'll let you know. We'll, yeah, we'll bring, we'll bring you back some. Steel caught this sturgeon recently, which had a ton of caviar in it. And he gifted me a nice portion of it. This is about two to three pounds worth. And which can probably be over a thousand dollars. Uh, if you were to purchase it whole, you know. So the way I processed it, it's pretty simple. It's like Ikura, if you've seen me do that before. Um, so you start it with a grate. This is sort of a, a big grate to use for caviar. I should, if I could have something something more plastic or something a little finer mesh would be would be more ideal. But this is all I had at the time, so that's what I used. So I cut the egg sac into portions first, just smaller manageable portions and gently rub them against the grate and then the eggs just fall down. After I have the entire egg sac all completed, um, all I have to do is wash it in fresh water several times just to get some of those broken egg, broken pieces and some of that uh, membrane that kind of fell in there also just to clean it out a bit make, 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 try to make it as pure as possible after it's all clean i just salt it a little bit mix it up and drain it and it's done and that's it well here we go mm -hmm. that sizzle baby Cheers, guys. You want your soju? I thought we were going to start with soju. Alright, she says she wants to start with soju. We'll do start with soju. Oh, I guess that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot our shot glasses and our chopsticks. That's okay. Mm. Want some bee tongue? Mm-hmm. Ooh, these suckers on here. It feels pretty wrong eating this before. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh, I just smell this matsutake so much. <laughs> amazing. Look at this kimchi, guys. Homegrown. Homemade. Oh my god. Kimchi paste from our friend's mom. That makes bomb kimchi. Mmm. Thank you, Liz. Mm -hmm. Try beef tongue. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't have to do the hard work of making the paste. <laughs> yeah. Beef tongue and rice. I need some sesame oil on this. Oh, check that out. Jocelyn made a little daikon wrap with kimchi, short rib, and rice. Mmm, tasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, 
bust out the caviar. Oh, and I'm not even gonna be shy. I got a ton of it. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, little daikon, little beef tongue, little kimchi, little rice, and a ton of caviar. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. The caviar is crazy good. Korean barbecue. It's very active. You gotta be on it or else you gotta burn the meats. These are, these are good. These are done. Get off over here. Got nuts take. Let's finish off this nuts take. Eat some nuts take and caviar together. How about that? Here we go. Here we go. We're gonna get crazy. Nuts take in the mi middle. We got. Short rib, a little bit of rice, got the caviar, and what are we gonna top the caviar? Oh my goodness. This is wild. This is wild. Only on Outdoor Chef Life. <laughs> that caviar, short rib, matsutake combo. Cheers, guys. Oh. oh my goodness. And out of all of that, the matsutake is still the most flavorful thing in there. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> now we got a shiso wrap with beef tongue, rice, and more caviar. So full. Oh, shout out to Delia's cast for that caviar. That was some next level <laughs> Korean barbecue right there. Oh. Well, it's getting pretty cold out there, so we're in the van now. And usually in the winter time, we come inside and hang out in the van a bit. We have our iPad, so we go in the bed, watch a movie or two, and just hang out in here. Oh. Or read a book. Or read a book. Sometimes, sometimes you do that. Read my nice book though. I got, just got that one. She got some nice books. She wants to do a book flex right here. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right guys, well we'll see you in the morning. Ohayou gozaimasu. Good morning guys. Uh, we had a great night of sleep. It's really uh, nice and insulated in here. So it doesn't get too cold. Not as cold as the outside if we had a tent. Anyways, Jocelyn's gonna get some breakfast going. She's gonna make some chilaquiles. And yeah, we're gonna head out for the day and do our actual video. Howdy, oh, camper. Good morning. How are you? Nice and bad. Thank you. Thank you. So you can either fry up your own like this or if you're trying to save some time, you can just buy tortilla chips. So this doesn't take that long and it tastes much better. And she already made some salsa at home. Oh, she's got the fried tortilla in there now. Cooking with the salsa. And that salsa is spicy. Yeah, I put habaneros instead of serranos this time. <laughs> I got tired of it being not spicy. <laughs> we got sour cream on there and uh, queso cotija on there too. That's this right here. Cotija, queso cotija is the bomb. Oh no, my popcorn. Jeez, just threw it. <laughs> it's gonna leak in too so. Mmm, there we have it. Some chilaquiles. That's bomb. Mm. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for this vlog video. Now we're going to go try to film our episode 2 of 
deliciously invasive. So stick around for that one coming next. See you guys. Peace.